Want to avoid debt this Christmas? Make a budget, limit gifts, and remember the reason for the season, Jesus. Let's get some Christmas perspective. Welcome to another episode of Christian Financial Perspectives. We're so glad that you've joined us. My name is Sean Peters, and my co-host joins me, Bob Barber. Today, we're going to be talking about seven takeaways for Christmas spending. And the idea of this, of course, is, well, we're a financial podcast, so we got to find some sort of financial topic for Christmas, right, Bob? Well, and Thanksgiving and is next week, that's and right. you know, what is it they call it, Black Friday, uh-huh. and, and uh, if you still get the old-fashioned newspaper, you know, it comes at, where it's about two or three inches thick full of ads, Yep. and um, everybody is... The old, I mean, I know 20 years ago, I don't know if this still goes on because I don't do it, but I know 20 years ago, 25 years ago, everybody was up on Friday morning after Thanksgiving, about 5 a.m. in the morning, you know, hitting the Walmarts and the Best Buys of the world. And now so many of those things end up being available online Christmas Day in the afternoon or Friday morning. So we call it cyber, right? (laughs) Cyber Black Friday or Cyber Monday, things like that. What we thought would be very helpful is some of these may seem a little redundant, maybe, or you've heard them before, but repetition, repetition, repetition. Well, it's good. It's good wisdom, you know. And and I think I think the 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 scripture I picked to go with seven takeaways for Christmas spending is from Proverbs twenty two seven. Now you've heard us say this on Christian Finance. Financial perspectives: The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender, which mm. takes us to our, our our first takeaway. Well, that's right, and, and that is most. Some people can pay off that credit card and, and are great about it. I mean, I know you and Jenna use a credit card, and you're so disciplined. Well, but, because but, but, but the reason that for it, percent, yes, we Sean. might be the exception, <laughs> but the the reason why is is for a lot of people, Bob, when they look at a credit card. It, there's no budget in place in the first place. And so we treat our credit card, for us at least, like a debit card. Yeah. Because whatever money we're spending, it's already in the bank. We only do it because it, it racks up points well, you're, you're different, Sean. I, I know. So, I know. So it's you're weird. different. So, so I, in general, I would say okay. uh, the rule of thumb is do not use a credit card. Do not use a credit card. Do not go into any debt over Christmas spending. That's right. Buy it with cash and what you have in savings. Yeah. Oh, goodness. That's a really so, big one, isn't it? It's a big one. But, <laughs> yeah. but keep this in mind. Some of these takeaways will be applicable for going into this Christmas season. Right. Some of it. Might not. You might have to implement this for the next year. Uh, so so don't be discouraged. But whether it's this year or next year, again, yes, do not go into debt just to buy gifts. It's so not what you, worth it. You've got to do right now, right now is figure out what's the total amount that you can spend on Christmas. That's not right. what you want to spend, but yeah. what you can spend. And that's from what you have in cash. In yep. savings, yep. right? Basically, right now, mm-hmm. and only use cash or a debit card. I know, you know, the majority of us now are going to buy our Christmas gifts online, so that's going to require a yeah. debit card. So you can use debit card for that, but but use a debit card. The credit card company is not going to say when you get to a limit; they're going to want you to keep going because they that's love right. charging that high interest. But a debit card, there's only a certain amount that that you can do. Yep. So I, I just I tell you it's it's a really great way to not overspend is coming from cash and a debit card. Exactly. Yep. And that's the main thing with that is so you don't go over whatever that budget or limit is that you set. The credit card makes it so easy to go over that budget. So number two, make a list of every person and every charitable organization that you want to give a gift to this year for Christmas. That's simple. Which kind of goes back into the budget as does, well. It does. It does. Yeah. You know, okay, great. Well, you figured out how much you can spend. Yep. Now go through your list. Like, okay, great. Well, how much can I spend for each person or organization? And then you go from there. And number three. So number three, this is an idea that... Uh, is an old idea, Sean. It's yeah, a this very, is very like white idea. elephant or something like that. Yeah, but but, but to take the pressure off, and this is going to depend on the family. Obviously, it, it does. It but, does. Uh, for for some families, especially if you have a, a really big family, so this that is our third together, takeaway. Yeah, it's number three. So okay. the third pressure is take the pressure off of people in the family, uh, especially again if you've got a big family. What you may want to do is instead of everybody trying to buy presents for 10, 15, 20 people. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe you guys just do the white elephant deal or, you know, where you draw or, a name or, from a you hat. You draw a name. It's, it's, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So figuratively speaking, what you try to do is you get eight, you get each family member's name, mm-hmm. you put it in a hat. Now, I know you're not going to probably put it in a hat. 
but figuratively you, but, put but it this, in a hat. This is the old fashioned way. You'd put it in a hat and their, their name is on it. And then everybody draws a name out of the hat. All right. And that's who you're going to buy a gift for. And Sean, this is meant um, more for the family members because there's going to be some family members that can't afford to buy gifts for everyone. And then there's sure. going to be, yeah. you know, you, you the, the ones that can buy, can afford to buy gifts for everyone plus every, plus yeah, 10 it's, more. It's multifaceted because right. the thing is, you know, if you've got a lot of family members, even if someone is budgeting in a very small amount and trying to be creative, like my wife always does creative stuff. Yeah. Uh, we, she, you know, hers is the time that she put into yep. it. But even still, it's hard to buy gifts if you've got a large family. And so this is one option. However, keep in mind, if you go this route, you know there's going to be that aunt or grandma or somebody that's like, I don't care. I'm going to buy gifts for everybody still oh, anyway. <laughs> Boy, that's going to be my wife. Yeah. Definitely. Um, right? Because some people just love that. Some people, yep. their love, love language is definitely gift giving. So do not try to tell them that for their Super Bowl for gift giving that they're not allowed to get gifts. But the thing is, Sean, I, I really believe that God never intended for Christmas to end up being a financial burden. Well, of course. Yeah. But but it yeah. does. You know, especially here be. in yeah. America, it can end up being a financial burden for some people if you have large families. So this yeah. is a way... That instead of having to buy 10 gifts, you can yeah. buy one. You can actually be more meaningful in that gift and That's maybe right. spend a little bit more on the one gift than you would on 10 gifts. Yep. It's, and uh, not, you, not, not 10 gifts combined, but you understand. Sure. That. Yeah. And if you're in a situation where, again, refer back to number one, if your family is buying, everyone's buying gifts for everyone, remember number one, do not go into debt of any kind to get gifts. Get creative. All right. There are a lot of gifts that you can give in that situation that require zero dollars, but just time. You know, especially for your family members, that quality time is their love language. So uh, refer to number one on all of these. Don't go into debt, no matter what the situation Which is. Which takes us right to number four again. Allocate a budget to each person mm -hmm. and charitable organization on your list. Total that number, then adjust as necessary to stay within budget. That's right. Now, Rachel told me about an app that we've been using for several years. You know, I did not know this until just a couple of days ago that she'd been using this app. Well, Bob, I will say you're probably more of the classic dad of, wait, where do we get the kids? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Because Rachel handles sure. all that. No yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah, but, What'd you get? What'd I get you? <laughs> but but she, it's called the Christmas List yep. app. You actually just go into mm -hmm. the app store. I went this morning, the Christmas List. Yeah. And, and so you can write everybody's name down. Then you put the amount you're going to spend, yep. and it actually keeps a running total yeah. Which is of awesome. each person. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't forget anybody either. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that that's out there today, and most of us have a smartphone, so that's a great way to yeah. do it. So number five, think long and hard about the gift you want to give. Yeah. Will it be remembered one to three years from now or longer or forgotten about in the next month or two? And I, I think a great example of this one, I think it was last year or the year before, but my sister-in-law, your middle daughter, uh, she got my wife these earrings. Now, when I say she got her these earrings, she made her a set of earrings. Okay. So if I had to guess, less than $10, I'm assuming, in materials, because uh -huh. she does this you know, for, for a lot of people. But that is something that she, Jenna, wears those earrings all the time. She loves that gift. So that's something that didn't cost a lot of money, but has a lot of meaning and value because it was that time and effort that she put into it. Plus, it's something she can wear all the time. It and, doesn't... And it doesn't get used up one time. And and, 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 and y'all now his wife, my daughter, she gives me coconut every year. So well, coconut cookies, flavored everything. Coconut <laughs> drinks, coconut everything. She knows I love everything coconut with coconut in it. So she yep. goes out. But I remember that, okay? Because yeah. I'm like, okay, what's and she you gonna, what's it. she gonna get me this year? Oh, I eat every oh, bit yeah. of it. And she and, and I don't know, I don't mean it's maybe a fifteen dollar basket of coconuts, but I'd love it. Yep. And I remember it every year. If she got me something else, I might not remember it. And and I, you know what? I doubt most of us can remember five gifts that we got in the last three years or Unless two years. Unless it's the ones that are actually more thoughtful. Well, exactly. Like yeah. you said, the, the sister-in-law, our, our middle daughter made that yeah. for our oldest daughter. Yeah. You know, it cracks me up. It reminds me yeah. of Clayton, one of our other staff members here. For for his dad, he pretty much always gets them some drinks, like energy drinks or something like that, yeah. and and the assorted roasted nuts or something. You know, so it's not very expensive, but it's one of those where he loves it. But he's the kind of guy that he'll never run over to H E B or wherever and, get and grab no, those. I, I, no, I'm <laughs> the same way. I don't go get all that stuff that Jenna yeah. gets me every year, but I absolutely love it. Yep. and it, it's 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 like 
ingrained in my memory yeah. now. Okay. And so this is this is our takeaway number six is ask yourselves about the gift. Does it have to be expensive to be appreciated? Yeah. Which we kind of highlighted, but it, it, yeah, it, why? it doesn't why? really. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Not not at all. And of course, our last one for today, number takeaway seven. number seven, definitely is the most important one, isn't it? Remember the real reason for Christmas yeah. this year, not the American slash Westernized version based on consumerism, debt, materialism, but you know, it's about Jesus. That's right. That's what it ultimately comes down to. Yeah, which I think would be great just to to, to end this on a couple of scriptures sure. today. You okay, want to do the so first one? I'll, you have you read from Matthew. Okay. Eight, uh, Matthew, first chapter in Matthew uh, 18 through 22. Okay. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what God had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And I took uh, verses 1 through 5 from the first chapter of John and uh, verse 14. Okay. okay? So verse 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him... All things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Verse 14, the word became flesh, this is through Jesus, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of his one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. We hope you have a Merry Christmas based on what God did for us. That's right. Sending his son. And that you also have some fun times. Yep. Giving <laughs> giving gifts. Yep. Well, God bless. And again, thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching. 